And today I'm going to be interviewing John Dryden, an inductee into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame. I'm Heather Ramsey, and you're watching HTV. So why did you choose bass? Why did I choose bass? It's a funny thing. Uh, there was too many guitar players. Uh, I was a guitar player for a long time, and I rehearsed with my band one day, and a, a local guy, I think he just had his 70th birthday, Wade Tarangelo, uh, was playing bass in a band I was in, and I asked if I could try his bass, and I tried it, and it, I, it just felt different and better and kind of cool to me. So I switched to bass at that point. Yeah. How long have you been playing? Uh, hmm. Is half a century a bad way to put it? <laughs> um, wow. I, I think I started when I was about 13. I'm 67 now, so you can do the math on that. Wow. Yeah. Did anyone inspire you? <laughs> you, you know what? When you're when you're an artist or a musician, uh, your uh, inspiration is is kind of kind of crucial, and uh, uh, it comes from everywhere and anywhere. Uh, yeah, well, t I, I could I, I could write a book on the people that inspired me and taught me, you know, different people I played with and that. Every everybody, you know, when you're when you're part of a musical community, it's all about exchanging ideas and and uh, and and moving forward and trying to get to be to play with the best people you can find. Which and I was really lucky, and I found a lot of great people to play with in my career. Yeah, speaking of that, you were in many big bands such as Trooper and Toronto. What was that like? Um, you know, um, great. How could it not be great? I'm, I'm a lucky guy. I, I, I really do feel like I'm, I've been pretty lucky to come from Port Alberni. And, you know, when I was about 21, I moved to Vancouver and played in club bands for a few years and then eventually graduated up into the recording acts and, you know, got to got to do some big tours with some with some big bands and, so, you know, played some big shows. How did you find them? You know what? Um, again, when you're part of the music community, it, it's kind of. Um, I think I might have done better if I had um, um, networked better, been a better business business person, or a better manager for myself. But all, all the all the jobs that came to me, uh, uh, I just got a phone call. I didn't I didn't solicit anything. It was always just you know, pick up the phone and you're in trooper. <laughs> what really? Who is this? That's, that's actually what I said to him when he when he told me I was in the band. Yeah, we'd like we'd like you to play in Trooper. I'm like, who is, is this? Mike? What's going on here? Right? And it was, but uh, yeah, it was Ray McGuire calling, and and then he, uh, I, I, I said, well, okay, if I'm in the band, what next? He says, well, I'll bring over a CD, and he brought me a CD called Hot Shots, which is their greatest hits, and he just said, learn every every song on the CD. So wow. I did, and then we then we toured around Canada for a few years, and I played on an album with them as well. Uh, which which I haven't checked on it, uh, but it went gold, which which means wow. I, I get a gold album for it, which is kind of cool. But um, I'm gonna I'll, I'll probably check on it. It may it may have gone platinum by now. I don't know. Wow. What Fingers does, crossed. <laughs> what does gold mean? Gold signifies different things in different countries. In Canada, because of the population base, gold is only fifty thousand records sold, fifty thousand units. In the states, I, I'm I'm not sure what it is in the states. It might be a million in the states. Again, based on population I, I in Sweden it's 30,000 again based on population they've got less people so to get a gold record you know it's just how it is have you gone on many tours uh, I toured like crazy all the way through the 80s and the, and the um, and the 90s what was it like recording an album um, again working with some top shelf people it, uh, it, it was wonderful the the engineer that we were working with had done uh, recorded all the Loverboy albums and or uh, wow. some of the Loverboy albums I should say uh, and you know again when you get in a situation like that um, uh, you're learning all the time and that's kind of the key to being a successful artist I think even though I was an artist I'm more of a what you could what you call a side a side man someone who supports the artist so recently, you were inducted into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame. I know. Where did that come from? I, I got a call from Ray Ray McGuire again, and uh, he just uh, he told me what was going on, and I didn't understand why, but I'm certainly grateful that it happened. That I, I they invited me to go attend the ceremony in in Calgary, um, but I just didn't. I, you know, I well, I've got a dog. Mm. <laughs> I just didn't want to leave my dog alone at home. Uh, so and uh, and it would and, and even though a, lo a local group of people got together and uh, were going to fund my trip for me, uh, mm. a couple of good friends of mine, uh, I, I still just thought to go to Calgary mm. just for two days. Mm, I don't I don't think I'll I don't think I'll bother with that. 
If, 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 if they would have allowed me on stage for the presentation, I would have attended, but I would have only been able to sit in the audience. And Troopers had so many members. If you go to their website and, and look at previous members, the list is massive. The, the reason I got included in this is because I actually recorded the album with them. So I, I believe everybody that was in the band didn't get inducted. But if you recorded something that kind of, it's kind of like verifiable proof that you contributed to Canadian culture, there it is. And, and that's why I was included in it, I believe. Did you have any favorite songs to play? In Trooper? Yeah. Um, again, I'm kind of a lucky guy. Um, uh, it was kind of cool when I joined the band. Uh, there was a, a fellow in the band before me named Frank Ludwig. And he, um, he sang a couple of songs that became hits. Uh, and Ray McGuire having, didn't really have an interest in singing the songs that Frank had sung, so I got to sing those songs in Trooper. It was kind of cool. Wow. Yeah, I know, right? Um, but aside from that, they, they've got tons of great songs. It's a funny thing. When I first joined the band, I wasn't really a fan, but after I played with them for a couple of years, I kind of you know, got to know the guys a bit better and that and became more familiar with uh, their legacy, for one thing. I mean, when, when we went on tour, I could not believe, uh, you know, it's a funny thing when you when you're in when you're from Vancouver, you're not a big deal in Vancouver, mm -hmm. right? But when we went to Toronto and and uh, and uh, you know all the cities back east, it, it, it was it was like we, we really felt a lot more like rock stars in Toronto in in Vancouver. It's like oh trooper again. Oh okay sure let's go say hi to the guys right you know, I mean it, it, the amount of people I've bumped into in my life that have said, uh, you know who's the first band you ever saw? Oh it was Trooper. Not quite the same for me, but they were definitely one of the first big bands. I mean, I saw Trooper before they were Trooper. Uh, they, they went through many, you know, different lineups and different names. They, they were, um, Winter's Green came here in the early 70s. And then, um, oh, what was the other band they were called? Oh, help me, help me. Slipping, slipping my mind right now. But, uh, but like I said, so, so we saw them kind of grow as a band and develop. And, and then they linked up with Randy Bachman and recorded their uh, their first album. Was he on the first one? I'm not sure. But linked up with he was a, yeah he would have been on the first one because he was who named the band. Wow. He said, "Wow, you guys are a bunch of troopers. We should call the band Trooper." And that's kind of where it came from. Kind of cool. What and Randy was, Bachman's a big deal. Wow. What was it like going on tour? Um, you know, it's a funny thing because I uh, a lot of people. Um, I, I compare it to when people are shooting movies and stuff or when you're touring and people go, oh, touring is so grueling. I'm like, oh my God, you only have to work for an hour and a half. All you have to do is pr be present for that hour and a half. Yeah, it can be tiring and you, you might be traveling hard hours and that, but still, I mean, you know, and, and then to, you know, you know, what's the bad part about being the party? You know, like you, you play and everybody's there to see what you've got going on or the band that you're in. It's, yeah, it, it was wonderful. Did you get to travel a lot for tours? Uh, pardon me? Did you get to travel a lot? Oh, yeah. I've uh, I've actually driven in a vehicle coast to coast in Vancouver seven times. What was your favorite place to go to? That's a really tough question. Uh, so many great uh, communities. Um, you know, when you get in the prairies, uh, Saskatoon is a gem. Right in the middle of all that dry wheat. <laughs> There's Saskatoon with their rivers and their bridges and a very active music scene as well. Uh, I really like Saskatoon a lot. Toronto, of course, is a big deal. It's Toronto you know, the center of the universe. Uh, that's for anybody from Toronto. So I don't know, I, I could go on and on about, uh, you know, the, all the great communities. Halifax, awesome. Because everywhere you go, Halifax is like Victoria, only an extra hundred years older. So that their architecture is, you know, kind of like it's Halifax. I mean, that's probably one of the first cities in Canada. It's right on the coast there, right? It's where they showed up. Did you get to spend lots of time doing stuff in the places you were visiting? It, it depends on how hectic the schedule was, but generally, yes. I, I did a, a after, after I played with all the recording bands, we actually, uh, the reason I quit playing with Lee Aaron was because I got picked up by a, uh, I recorded an album with a band from uh, Langley, uh, T Tim Lawson, and uh, then they decided to go tour Europe, and they phoned me up, and I didn't want to quit playing with Lee Aaron because it's a great gig and, and that, but um, they offered me a whole pile of money and, and, and an all expense paid trip to Europe uh, three times. So, uh, so we, uh, and on and that one, we, we spent a lot of time being tourists, you know, checking out P Piccadilly Square and, you know, all the, all the things in Britain, Big Ben. Wow. It, it was wow, yeah, there's some wow. What were your favorite parts of being in these bands? Oh, 
it, you know what? I, I, I just can't complain about the lifestyle. It's just, a, it's a, it, it, um, it, even though things have changed drastically now, like when I, when I went to Vancouver, you could actually go to Vancouver and get a job in a band and, and uh, stay alive, support yourself, which is what I did for years. You know, scamming, getting cheap deals on, on apartments uh, and stuff like that. Um, when I moved to Vancouver, I didn't even have a car. You know, but you, you know, you, you dig in and you, you accomplish things. And then, like you say, you move up the ladder a little bit and, and uh, then you get with the better bands and then, then your touring schedule becomes less hectic because when you're, when you're in a, um, when you're not in a recording band, you're playing six nights a week in, in Vancouver. Um, but when you're in a recording band, you would, uh, you would, we, I think when I was in Trooper, we averaged about 160 shows a year. And then, and then on the other time that I had that was off, I would go play with uh, club bands and, and make more money doing that. And it really helped to be in Trooper because they would mention that when they when they talked about uh, you know when they sold the band oh it's got a couple guys from Trooper in the band ooh big deal so you get a bit more, bit better money and and good good gigs. Mm. What was the hardest part? The hardest part? Um, well, just you know what, um, being in bands, uh, it, it can be like a uh, it's a relationship, mm. you know. So so every now and then you will wind up with uh, somebody in a group that you just don't get along with all that great. So that you know, uh, pers personal sort of things I think would probably be the. The hardest thing to work around. Do you have any tips for aspiring musicians? Well, like I said, things have changed a lot. Um, you can't just move to Vancouver and, and survive now. Uh, I mean, you, as far as I know, you just can't move to Vancouver with, with the price of rent and, and everything that's going on over there, right? It's uh, uh, very expensive. The reason I moved out when, when I was 50 years old was because rent was going up and it was just, I was looking at the expenses. I thought, you know, I'm going to come back to Port Alberni because I'm more or less from here. I lived here since I was 10. Um, so I moved back to Port Alberni. I thought I'd get a job selling cars or, or something like that. Um, but uh, it was a good time to get out of Vancouver because it's just way too pricey. My rent was, you know, a thousand dollars a month, and which which is like so cheap when you hear what it is now, right? But yeah, it was it was time to get out. And then I came back here and um, I I got a, a local job at, at a local pawn shop and. Um, and now I'm teaching um, bass and guitar and ukulele and slide guitar and whatever else that happens at uh, Notable Music. How did you start out with Notable Music? Uh, a, a good friend of mine, Chris Dewey, where it is running the whole show, and uh, we, he said he would like me to teach for them. So we negotiated a deal, and, and, and I teach there now. What sort of things do you teach? Songs. Uh, when you're usually when people first come in, I teach how to play some songs to get people going on on instruments. Uh, but eventually, like most of my good students right now are all, uh, I'm just I'm just teaching them technique and how to be a better musician, because uh, most of them are to the point, much like your sister, where um, they don't need me to teach them how to play a song. They can just go and learn how to play the song. They have the ability now. It's kind of what I shoot for. How long have you been doing this? Teaching. Yeah. I've been teaching on and off since I was 16. Wow. Yeah. I've got some really good students right now. Like I, I, one of my students just sent me a, a song. Um, his name's Evan. I won't say the last name because I'm probably not allowed to. Who knows? Um, but uh, he sent me a song and, and I, I got to tell you, I was more than impressed by it. I mean, it was just like absolutely mind blowing. The kid, they've got a piano player in their band and I'm like, holy smokes, where did they find this piano player? So much young talent when they, but kids don't have the focus um, and, and the time. Like when I was, when I was growing up, it was nothing to practice four hours a day. No internet. No, can you imagine? Yeah. You probably can't. You're probably, what, that, the, you call it the dark ages. No internet. Yeah. So, like I said, you know, we spent hours and hours uh, just working on our instruments and, and getting great, better at it. Then you move to Vancouver and you play six nights a week uh, for four hours every night. That's a, you're logging a, a massive amount of playing time. Uh, very similar to when you go, when you go to college uh, and, and uh, and, uh, and, and play there. You're spending hours and hours, and that's what breeds talent. You start with a certain amount of talent that's natural, a person has a certain amount of ability, but to hone that talent, you need to, you need to polish it. What are some things you do to be able to work that much? How do you handle that? Again, it's changed a lot. For musicians, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, um, it's very hard, like, I, um, I've got a few people that are, that are still in Vancouver that I know that are still making it go as a, as a professional musician, but it's very tough and they've got very high paying jobs. But what, what, what the bands have done now is most of the bands are, are doing tributes to other bands and they can charge quite a bit more money for that and they can actually make a fairly good living. And when you've got a good tribute, you wind up, you wind up touring like North America 
you know, country fairs all over the place. I've got a, a couple friends playing in Eagle Eyes um, that, uh, that are doing quite well. What are tributes? A tribute is, is when a band uh, does cover material of only one band. Like um, Eagle Eyes is an Eagles tribute. They only play Eagles songs and they do them really well. Killer band. What are your favorite parts of teaching music? Um, you know what, it's, it's a funny thing because uh, no two students are the same. No two students get the exact same approach, uh, but just seeing results is, is, is got to be the, the best thing, you know. Uh, some students, it, it takes a while, like especially with really young ones, even to get them to, um, uh, to, to get sounds out of the instrument at all. I, I'm actually, I've got a, a new six-year-old student right now and it's, uh, he's forcing me to rethink how I teach at all. And it, it's, it's, it's good for me. You know, but yeah, seeing results is, is the big thing. Um, I've got one student that plays in a couple of bands in Victoria, Lucas Bosma. He's a killer guitar player. Very proud of him, you know. Are any of your students now in bands? Yes, Lucas. <laughs> uh, I think he might be the only one. Um, but I've, got a, I've got a couple other ones that, that went into the music business. Well, actually, one another student I'm particularly proud of, uh, Drake. Uh, he has just finished the program at... Um, is it North Island College the, I in the Nanaimo? So. Pardon? Oh. Uh, oh. It's, uh, and I, I, like, I should just mention this. Apparently, they're thinking of shutting the jazz program down at the college in Nanaimo. Right? <laughs> I know. Uh, it, maybe it's due to enrollment or, or what. And uh, I don't know what can be done about it, but people should definitely be aware of it. Because, like I said, Drake just went through the program uh, and now he's off teaching in, um, uh, I believe, Comox. And then he's going to be a high school music teacher. But that's by going to school in Nanaimo, right? They're going to take that program away and that opportunity isn't going to be there. Then if a person wants to do that, they're going to have to go to uh, Victoria or uh, Vancouver. And again, mm. Vancouver, hugely expensive, right? Yes. What is your favorite type of music to play? Funk. Why? It's funky. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty basic, eh? Uh, it's a funny thing. Uh, rock music is comprised mostly of eighth notes, which makes it sort of a dunk, 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 dunk. That's all you get. But funk mm -hmm. has sixteenth notes, which makes it jump around, like dunk, dunk, ba -da -dunk, ba -da -dunk, dunk, which gives it much more lively and much more. Uh, it, 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 it makes people want to dance if they're into that kind of music. Mm -hmm. Some people just want ACDC, though. <laughs> Do you listen to the same type of music that you like playing? I listen to whatever I'm working on generally. I, I get requests from my students to learn songs. And uh, I mean, I've got some favorite acts. I like uh, Tedeschi Trucks. Derek Trucks is a, just an amazing guitar player. I could listen to him all day. Not that I have time to. And you said you have a dog? Yes, I do. Can you tell us about him? Thor? Yeah. Thor the Wonder Dog? Uh, he's uh, best dog. I've had, I've had over a dozen dogs in my life. And um, uh, he's definitely the best dog I've ever had. Just well behaved. You know, do you have a dog? No. Thor would not understand you at all. <laughs> Be like, hey, a person, where's your dog? I had a cat. Oh yeah, well, pets are pets, right? They're fr they're friends, and and they uh, they they're uh, generally um, you know nicer than friends. <laughs> Maybe it's because they can't talk human. Maybe they'd have something to say if they could talk to us. I don't know. And they do talk to us in ways anyway, but yeah. How would you describe Thor? I think his name pretty much describes him. You can you can like his Facebook page. Everybody mm -hmm. like Thor's Facebook page. That'd be great. <laughs> He's got more followers than I do. Do you do anything other than music? Any hobbies? Uh, music's pretty consuming. Uh, even though I, I I'm not practicing as much as I maybe should lately. Mm. But um, hobbies, mm, you know, just I, I I I like playing games. I like to play pool. I like to do crossword puzzles. I play Sudoku. Things that occupy your mind. If you, if you have your mind occupied, you don't worry about stuff as much. It keeps you from you know all the stuff that you're constantly thinking about. If you're doing something, you don't think about stuff. Not that things are really bad for me. Things are pretty good. If you could be in any TV show, movie, or book, which one would you be? And why? This one right here. <laughs> any TV show or book? Or movie. Or movie? Oh my God! <laughs> well, Spinal Tap was pretty cool. I don't know, but but then wait a minute. No, no, it was the drummers that died in Spinal Tap, not the bass player. So, but uh, I I don't know. That's that's a. I don't know. What was your favorite place to live? To live? 
Yeah. Well, I moved back to Port Alberni. Okay. So, what, what's your favorite things about Alberni? Uh, the, um, I'm big on the surrounding areas. I, I take Thor to Sprout Lake um, four or five times a week. Uh, I walk I walk them around town, you know. It, yeah, mostly, it's mostly the outdoorsy thing about Port Alberni that's uh, what makes it so great here. Just supernatural British Columbia. This is it. Do you have anything else you'd like to share about yourself? Uh, uh, one accomplishment that I, 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 a person asked me what an accomplishment was that I should be proud of. And I mean, aside from the... Um, the gold record that Trooper gave me, and the um, the being inducted into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame, um, one one on one tour in three nights, I managed to play in front of over a hundred thousand people. Uh, Fifty thousand the first night, twenty thousand the next night, and thirty thousand on the third night. And we were flying, um, we were flying all in the same jet, uh, uh, you know, a seven forty seven, and it had uh, just basically the who's who of rock bands from the eighties. Leonard Skinner was on board. It was, Leonard Skinner was on board, and they have lost a couple members to plane crashes. So Pat Benatar would not fly on the plane with them, thinking that they were cursed or something. So, uh, but yeah, um, but everybody was on the plane. Like uh, I sat with a couple guys from Foreigner and did crossword puzzles, and um, Peter Frampton was there. Um, but like I said, Pat Benatar, great, great shows to be a part of. I mean, I, I spent just I spent more time in the audience watching the bands or up on in the backstage area. Heart was there, you know. Like I say, the Doobie Brothers, Deep Purple, it, it just every 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 band that was all all my favorite bands. I've seen all almost all my favorite bands live, from 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 touring and that. So that was kind of a, a good perk. Wow, that must have been awesome. Well, and then you get to meet people too, right? You know, heroes and that. Even though I didn't, I didn't really force myself on anybody because when when tour, bands are touring that i know especially the stars they're in demand and everybody wants to have oh my god i need to talk to you and i, I just couldn't do that to people and the biggest mistake i made in my career was not taking pictures mm. it, it was pre-cell phone cell phones just came out at the end of my uh my when i, when I was touring and that so you, you know nobody was walking around going click 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 all day long which which they're doing now every time you see somebody famous like click click mm. One of the funniest things I saw, I, and I guess I, sh I shouldn't say it because I, I guess he's having eye problems, but they were leading John Kay on to, from Steppenwolf onto stage. And it was, it was about uh, two in the afternoon and the guy was shining a flashlight on the ground in front of him. Broad daylight. It was just kind of a weird thing. I'm like, oh, uh, wow. Weird. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no shortage of weirdness out there. Well, thank you for coming. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching HGV. I'm Heather Ramsey. See you next time.